So I just wanted to say about the snowball that I tried to hold to the candle, that little test that I did, that was just for fun. And I think some people were coming on here taking it way too seriously. I was just wanting to see what would happen to it because people told me about the snow in Texas and I just did it for fun and not to make a big statement or a scientific test or anything too exotic or crazy. It was just for fun. And so don't take it too seriously. But today I just kind of was noticing some things that relate to the War of Gog and Magog, potentially. And I just wanted to read you a couple of articles. I just came in from trying to dig out my car, and I actually got stuck trying to back out because the snowplow left, you know, about, I don't know, two feet, foot and a half or so, somewhere in between there behind my car. And then there were drifts on either side of my doors and everything. My car was completely buried. So I still had my sunglasses on, so let me change to my glasses so I can share with you what I wanted to tell you. As you can see out the window behind me, which is kind of making my face dark, I've got a light in front of me, but it's not shining on my face. So hopefully you can see me, <laughs> but you can see the snow behind me and... I just wanted to read this first article that came out December 6th of 2020 so that it'll kind of clarify what I wanted to tell you was just in the news. This was dated December 6, 2020, Israel Hayom, JNS org. Following years of diplomatic strife, Turkey over the weekend signaled to Israel yet again its desire for rapprochement. On Monday, former Admiral Cihat Yesi, a close confidant of the Turkish President Erdogan, is expected to publish a first-of-its-kind proposal for an agreement on the country's shared exclusive economic zones, the EEZs, in the Mediterranean Sea. If you'll remember, you know, Italy also is concerned about their territory on the Mediterranean Sea. And I talked about that quite some time ago, but it said the article will appear in the Israeli academic journal Turkey Scope, published by the Moshe Dayan Center for Middle Eastern and African Studies at Tel Aviv University, indicating in and of itself a desire to quell tensions with Israel. Israel Hayom has learned this was the second such signal of reconciliation from Turkey as it pertains to Israel's energy market. Four months ago, officials in Ankara sent their Israeli counterparts a clear message about Turkey's desire to launch talks on the matter. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, however, the process stalled. The next proposal followed a report last week in an Erdogan-affiliated Turkish media outlet about secret talks between Mossad officials and their Turkish counterparts. According to the report, in these talks too, Erdogan's representatives expressed a desire to readjust relations with Israel. The report also noted that in recent months, the Turkish leader has ceased making belligerent statements about the Jewish state. According to Yesi's proposal, meanwhile, the maritime borders between the two countries will come together at the expense of Cyprus. From the perspective of the Turks, the deal proposed to the Israelis is an extension of the maritime border the former admiral constructed with Libya. That deal was signed in Tripoli on November 27th of last year and is the source of the current tensions between Ankara and Athens, Greece. If to this point the Greeks were already enraged over their maritime contiguity with Cyprus being severed, then such a deal would make things even more difficult for Greece and Nicosia. First and foremost, the former Turkish admiral is focusing on transferring blocks 8, 9, 11, and 12 from Cyprus to Israeli hands. Block 12 is the location of the significantly sized Yishai 
Aphrodite gas field. Northwest of Israel's Leviathan gas field, controlled by Israeli company Delic, industry giant Shell, and U.S. base Noble Energy, the gas field discovered off Cyprus's shores in 2011 by Texas-based Noble Energy is estimated to contain between 7 to 10 billion cubic meters of gas on the Israeli side and about 100 billion cubic meters on the Cypriot side. As a reference, the estimated value of the 100 billion cubic meters of gas is about $9 billion. You can see how these tensions could escalate greatly. The maritime border between Israel and Cyprus in the area of the Yishai Aphrodite Reservoir is still under dispute despite all the other agreements the countries have signaled. Despite all the other agreements the countries have signed. At the same time, Cyprus and Turkey are mired in numerous disputes over their maritime borders. Therefore, Yesi is endeavoring to resolve both Ankara and Jerusalem's problems in one fell swoop through a bilateral agreement between Turkey and Israel that leaves Cyprus in the lurch. Also a potential benefit to Israel, based on Yezi's proposal, is connecting Israel's intended gas pipeline to Europe to the already existing Turkish pipeline. According to Yezi, this option would be significantly more practical and cheap for Israel in comparison to the East Med project. An Israeli consent to Yezi's proposal, meanwhile, would almost certainly spark strident resistance from Greece and Cyprus. First and foremost, they would view any Israeli-Turkish application of sovereignty in what they consider their own territorial waters as an invasion. Secondly, Israeli agreement to the Turkish proposal would also represent recognition of Turkey's position on the EEZ near the Greek islands of Rhodes and Castellorizo. Finally, it would put Israel in an uncertain position in relation to the United Arab Emirates for two reasons. This first, Abu Dhabi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Zayed recently signed a defense pact with the Greek Prime Minister. Beyond that, the tensions between the UAE and Erdogan and his Qatari partners would lead to real diplomatic fallout between Jerusalem and Abu Dhabi. As for the Turkish proposal, a senior Israeli official said that while improving relations with Ankara, was a welcome development, any proposal that comes at the expense of Cyprus is a non-starter. Cyprus is an ally of Israel, and the maritime border between the countries is recognized by the United Nations and European Union, the official explained. In light of the recent reports of rapprochement between the country's intelligence agencies, Yezi's very proposal put forth in the article he penned indicates Ankara's desire for a new upgrade of relations with Israel, said the editor, Dr. Yanoraka. With that, for the two countries to upgrade relations to the point of real normalization, trust-building measures must be put to in place, which before all else requires the return of ambassadors and consuls. Yenerakuk added, for the sake of any relationship built on mutual trust, Turkey needs to change the nature of its discourse toward the state of Israel. In other words, it must stop with the delegitimization of Israel that harms its image to the Turkish street. Beyond that, Ankara must scrap its intimate relationship with Hamas. If Erdogan does this, it's reasonably safe to believe Jerusalem will strive to find ways to make the relationship pr prosper again, as has happened in the past. Now, I shared that article with you from early December so that you'll understand why this article just came out March 15th from David Sidman of Israel365news.com. March 15th, 2021, it says, Preparation for war with Turkey? Question mark. 
IDF holds naval drill with Greece and Cyprus. It shows an IDF naval patrol off the Mediterranean coast. It says Israel carried out a joint naval exercise on Friday with Greece and Cyprus, the Israeli military said in a statement. The drill, called Noble Dina, took place in the Mediterranean Sea to the west of Cyprus and was led by the Israeli Navy. Turkey is hostile to both Greece and Cyprus. Israeli Navy vessels simulated different scenarios alongside Greek, French, and Cypriot fleets and strengthened the cooperation between the navies, said the statement. Very interesting that France is involved in that, don't you think? Israeli Rear Admiral Harel, the head of Israeli naval operations, was quoted by AP as saying that the exercise involved underwater warfare, search and rescue, convoy escort, and surface combat. The drill comes amid tensions with Turkey over the control of energy resources in the Mediterranean Sea. Israel, Cyprus, and Greece signed a Memorandum of Understanding, an MOU, earlier this month regarding a project to link their power grids via the construction of the world's longest and deepest undersea power cable. So in order to understand that, let's go back to June 18th of 2017. In Israel 365, there was this article by Zapit Press Service. Israel, Greece, Cyprus plan, massive underwater gas pipeline. And it showed the leaders of Greece and Cyprus and Benjamin Netanyahu shaking hands. Plans for an ambitious underwater natural gas pipeline dominated a trilateral summit between Israel, Greece, and Cyprus in the northern Greek city of Thessaloniki. And of course, we call it Thessalonica, and it's the same place. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, his Greek counterpart, and the Cyprus president said plans would be expedited to develop a pipeline to carry natural gas from Israeli and Cyprus reserves in the eastern Mediterranean to Europe over 2,000 kilometers in length and costing over six billion dollars the so-called East Med pipeline would be among the world's longest we agreed to fast track our common actions toward the new gas pipeline which will connect Israel and Cyprus with Greece and the rest of Europe and that was stated by the Cyprus president here. He said the project would offer new prospects of economic cooperation in the eastern Mediterranean, while Netanyahu called it an audacious plan and said it would be a revolution. We've had preliminary studies of it, and it seems promising, and we're going to look further into it. It's something we're very excited about, he said. The sides are also examining a 2,000 megawatt underwater electricity cable, the Euro-Asia interconnector, to be laid together with the pipeline that would link the electricity grids of the three countries. According to the Cyprus Mail, a Greek government official said Greece had also proposed adding fiber optic cables to the project. Netanyahu also held separate bilateral meetings with the leaders of those countries. Prior to the summit, Netanyahu attended the unveiling of a plaque to mark the construction of a Holocaust museum in Thessaloniki. Some 95% of the city's pre-war Jewish population were murdered by the Nazis in the Holocaust. So now let's go to this article from November 30th of 2018 by JNS Inspiration. It says, Israel agrees 7 billion East Med gas pipeline with Italy 
Cyprus and Greece. So that does put Italy in the picture. Now if you recall, I talked about Julius Caesar Mussolini or Gaius Julius Caesar Mussolini and should he sometime in the future run as the leader of Italy, that would be very interesting for the last days. And so they were concerned in Italy about the Mediterranean Sea territory that they want to maintain control of. So let's go to this article that includes Italy and it says Israel, Cyprus, Greece and Italy have reached an agreement on the world's longest underwater gas pipeline estimated to cost nearly seven billion dollars the financial website Globes recently reported. After signing a memorandum of understanding late last year, the four countries have negotiated the details of the deal. It is expected that the deal, which calls for the laying of the pipeline with the capacity of 10 to 20 billion cubic meters of gas and will traverse 1,300 miles will be signed in February of next year and of course that was when this was 2018 I believe so it would have been 2019 the European Union which backs the deal has spent a hundred million dollars performing feasibility studies which have produced positive results according to current estimates it will take about a year to arrange the financing for the pipeline and give years to place it if all goes according to plan, the pipeline could be operational as soon as 2025. Minister of National Infrastructures, Energy and Water Resources Yuval Steinitz originally proposed the pipeline two years ago in Abu Dhabi. The project is expected to cost NIS $25 billion, which it says, well it says NIS so that's 6.7 billion and be financed by private enterprise investors are expected to recoup their outlays by charging for the conveyance of the gas through the pipeline although priority will be given for the export of gas from israel and cyprus through the pipeline to europe other countries will be allowed to access the pipeline if they reach an agreement with the four partners and so we just read that France was involved as well as Cyprus and Greece and Israel with these recent naval, military, maritime simulations of war games. And it says, while questions have been raised about the economics of the pipeline, the rising price of gas in Europe has quieted some of the criticism. And this is interesting. It says the agreement that we have drawn up will enable Israel to become an energy supplier to Europe and that has both economic and political importance. This will be the first time ever that Israel has joined with the EU on any major infrastructure project, said Steinitz. The discovery of natural gas fields in Israeli coastal waters and plans to sell the resource to Europe have drawn Israel, Greece, and Cyprus closer together diplomatically. In May, leaders of the three nations held their fourth trilateral summit over the past two and a half years. And so now the Turkish leader is trying to cut out Cyprus as part of this deal. But that's not all, because if you go back to 2014, in February 21st by Leah Speyer in Israel's 365 News it says Israel Jordan signed 500 million dollar natural gas deal and so they have this Tamar gas field that they had started back then and it says under a new agreement signed between Noble Energy and two Jordanian companies Israel's Tamar gas field will supply Jordan with 66 billion cubic feet of natural gas 
the deal with a price tag of $500 million will take place over a 15-year period. The agreement to sell natural gas from the Tamar Fields is the first to take place outside of Israel. Arab Potash and its affiliate Jordan Bromine will begin receiving the gas, which they did in 2016 upon the completion of the pipeline infrastructure. Noble Energy, the biggest foreign investor in the Tamar gas fields in the Mediterranean, announced the deal. Based in Houston, but listed in New York, Noble Energy hopes to expand the contract to a 30 billion dollar partnership under the New Deal, Israel would become the largest supplier of gas to Jordan. And now that brings in the king of Jordan having more deals with Israel that could eventually turn into some conflict in the future. And I, I talked about how the Lord had shown me about that being a seven-year lease of the Temple Mount for the Jews to be able to build their temple and then halfway through breaking the lease and that maybe he would be taken out of the way and whoever steps up to the plate is the one that is the AC. Okay, so now let me get back to the story. Gas will be sold to Jordan at a base price of 650 per thousand cubic feet but can be increased based on Brent crude oil prices. The intention of Noble and its partners is to expand its gas export agreements in the future with neighboring countries of Israel, as well as develop even further the Tamar and even larger Leviathan gas fields. According to a report by Israel's Channel 2, the Jordanians turned to Israel for gas since natural gas from Egypt has been halted due to increasing terrorist attacks on gas pipelines. This deal will pave the way for additional export projects, which could be enhanced regional cooperation as well as provide additional supply to the domestic market and enhance security of supply through the development of additional reservoirs and infrastructures, said Lawson Freeman, Noble's Eastern Mediterranean Vice President. The Tamar gas field was open for pumping in March of 2013. Most of the gas output from Tamar will be used for domestic use. The second major gas field, Leviathan, is estimated to hold 18 TN cubic feet of gas. Potential customers for Leviathan include Turkey, Cyprus, and Egypt. Noble and its Israeli partner, Delic, hope to begin pumping gas from Leviathan. And of course, Noble and its Israeli partner, Delic, hoped to begin pumping gas from the Leviathan in 2017, which they did. And it says that $15 billion in Israeli natural gas was sold to Egypt. And real quickly, that article about Egypt said, Delic drilling along with Texas-based Noble Energy has signed a deal worth potentially $15 billion to sell natural gas from its Leviathan and Tamar fields to Egypt's Dolphinus Holdings Limited. Delic and Noble will supply some 3.5 billion cubic feet of gas from each of the fields for a total of 64 billion BCM from the two fields by 2030, the company said. The agreement to supply gas from the Tamar field replaces a previous smaller agreement signed in 2015. Delic noted in a statement to the Israeli Securities Authority and the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange, Delic said that the price of the gas would be set according to a price formula linked to a barrel of Brent crude oil. The company noted that the supply of gas from Tamar would commence once infrastructure for the delivery of natural gas was operational and from Leviathan when production in the field began. Delic said it was examining a number of options to deliver the gas to Egypt including the Arish Ashkelon section of the existing Eastern Mediterranean Gas EMG pipeline and the Pan-Arabian pipeline via Jordan. 
The EMG pipeline is a branch of the Arab gas pipeline and runs underwater west of the coastline of Egypt, Gaza, and Israel. It was formerly used to deliver gas from Egypt to Israel, but supplies were ceased in 2013 due to repeated attacks on a feeder pipeline in the Sinai Peninsula and gas shortages in Egypt. Earlier this week, the EMG partnership was awarded one billion dollars in compensation by a Cairo-based court of arbitration. Delic drilling was up by almost 28 percent on the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange on the news. Delic's junior partner in the Leviathan Field Ratio Oil Exploration was up by 25 percent. So all of this talk from the Turkish president and all of this pipeline connection through all of these various countries that I've just been talking about is very interesting when you consider Ezekiel 38, the prophecy against Gog, and the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Prophesy against him and declare that this is what the Lord God says, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn you around and put hooks in your jaws and bring you out with all your army, your horses, your horsemen in full armor, your horses, your horsemen in full armor, and a great company armed with shields and bucklers all brandishing their swords. Persia, Cush, and Put will accompany them. All the shields and helmets as well as Gomer, with all its troops, in Beth Tagarma, from the far north, with all its troops, the many nations with you. Get ready, prepare yourself, you and all your company gathered around you, you will be their guard. After a long time, you will be summoned. In the latter years, you will enter a land that has recovered from war, whose people were gathered from many nations to the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. They had been brought out from the nations and all now dwelling securely. You and all your troops and many peoples with you will go up advancing like a thunderstorm. You will be like a cloud covering the land. And this is what the Lord God says. On that day, thoughts will arise in your minds and you will devise an evil plan. You will say, I will go up against a land of unwalled villages. I will come against a tranquil people who dwell securely, all of them living without walls or bars or gates, in order to seize the spoil and carry off the plunder, to turn a hand against the desolate places now inhabited, and against a people gathered from the nations who have acquired livestock and possessions, and who live at the center of the land. Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish and all its villages will ask, Have you come to capture the plunder? Have you assembled your hordes to carry away loot, to make off with silver and gold, to take cattle and goods, to seize great spoil? Therefore prophesy, son of man, and tell Gog that this is what the Lord God says. On that day, when my people Israel are dwelling securely, will you not take notice of this? And you will come from your place out of the far north, you and many peoples with you, all riding horses, a mighty horde, a huge army. You will advance against my people Israel like a cloud covering the land. It will happen in the latter days. O Gog, that I will bring you against my land so that the nations may know me when I show myself holy in you before their eyes. This is what the Lord God says. Are you the one of whom I have spoken in the former days through my servants, the prophets of Israel, who in those times prophesied for years that I would bring you against them? Now on that day when God comes against the land of Israel, declares the Lord God, my wrath will flare up. In my zeal and fiery rage I proclaim that on that day there will be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. The fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the beasts of the field, every creature that crawls upon the ground and all mankind on the face of the earth will tremble at my presence. The mountains will be thrown down, the cliffs will collapse, and every wall will fall to the ground. 
And I will summon a sword against Gog on all my mountains, declares the Lord God, and every man's sword will be against his brother. I will execute judgment upon him with plague and bloodshed. I will pour out torments of rain, hailstones, fire, and sulfur on him, and on his troops, and on the many nations with him. I will magnify and sanctify myself, and will reveal myself in the sight of many nations, and then they will know that I am the Lord." And so all of these nations are going to come together and invade Israel like a cloud because there's something that they're all in agreement with Israel trying to get this natural gas and portions of the Mediterranean Sea claiming sovereignty over portions of that body of water. Now this is an interesting statement. Um, it says that at various points in Jewish history Gog and Magog have been identified with different global powers whose conflicts were believed or hoped to usher in the Messianic Age. In the 19th century some Hasidic leaders believed the Napoleonic Wars against Russia were the war against Gog and Magog. And this is coming from a Jewish resource that I'm reading. Nevertheless, as with most issues relating to the Messiah in the end of days, contemporary Jewish theology does not dwell much on the matter. And that statement was from myjewishlearning.com. And, of course, Christians know that Turkey is a part of that, and some of those locations are actually in Turkey. So basically there you have all of the countries surrounding Israel involved in that including Turkey and some of the places mentioned in Turkey Meshach, Tubal, they're all in Turkey and of course Put is Libya. Now also remember that one time in the video I talked about how China which is represented by the dragon is also in control of one of Israel's ports and so that would be on the Mediterranean coast. Now I just wanted to mention this I was trying to find something about this and Jewish Voice actually had an article it says many people are familiar with Ezekiel 38 through 39 they know this prophecy speaks of a military invasion of Israel led by a figure known as Gog of the land of Magog unfortunately however many prophecy teachers today erroneously connect Gog to Russia part of the reason for this is because in both the New American Standard and New King James versions of the Bible Gog is not only said to come from the land of Magog but is also further described as the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. Because the word Rosh sounds similar to Russia and because Meshach and Tubal sound similar to the Russian cities Moscow and Tobolsk, it has often been assumed in conservative prophecy circles that Gog must be Russia. In reality, however, most scholars now recognize that Ezekiel 38.2 actually describes Gog as the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, not the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. In other words, the Hebrew term Rosh, which means head, chief, or foremost, is modifying Gog's title as a prince, Nazi. Interesting that that's what they call the members of the Sanhedrin. And I'm just throwing that out there because I know about that connection. And it's saying, is modifying Gog's title as a prince, Nazi. It is not the name of a particular place, which in turn rules out many possible association between Gog and Russia. The idea that Gog is actually the chief, Rosh, prince, Nazi, of Meshach and Tubal is found in the ESV, NIV, and other JPS translations of the Bible. 
Now that the association between Gog and Russia has mostly fallen out of favor among scholars, there is near unanimous agreement in scholarly Bible commentaries and Bible atlases that in Ezekiel's day, Magog, Meshach, and Tubal were all located in what is now modern Turkey. And of course, if you look on the map, you can see those places right there. And it used to be Asia Minor until the Turks invaded and took over the landmass and renamed it Turkey. And of course, they killed a lot of the Armenians in order to root them out. And they were some of the first Christians. So here we have all of this connection with all of these people in these nations wanting to have their share of the Mediterranean Sea pipeline that supplies gas to Europe and each of these countries surrounding Israel. Very interesting. So I just wanted to report on this because I really believe that all of these articles that I researched, they kind of all came together making one big picture about how this is all going to come about in the latter days. I just decided to look up something more about the Italian connection because I told all about the Italian elections a long time ago and part of their concern was their control over part of the Mediterranean Sea. And this article, it says, What's up with Italy? That Italian representatives will not attend the East Med contract signing in Athens, Greece, was seen by many as a setback, too. According to Greek media, Rome's absence was directly related to differences of opinion within the Italian governments. Though Italy has assured Greece it will continue to support the project, Italian Minister of Economic Development Stefano Patuanelli said Rome will also have to build a second underwater pipeline on its own in order to draw gas from the Greek port of Iguamenitsa. So this is all very interesting, all of these things coming together and the region around the Mediterranean Sea and how this natural gas pipeline is going to somehow play a role in these future events of the War of Gog and Magog, I believe, somehow. And we're looking for our Messiah to come, aren't we? Anyway, this is just Kimberly Ballard reporting some interesting prophetic events that are on the horizon. And I hope that this was informative to you. Thank you so much for just kind of connecting with me during the storm. Thank you for all your comments. And thank you to the couple of people that supported me. I appreciate that so much. If you want to support me, please do. And I will talk to you soon. I hope you found this interesting.